Welcome to part two of Westfield, Massachusetts Railroads. This video will look at the north-south railroad lines that connect in Westfield. The map orientation is looking north. This shows the Westfield River at the bottom and the Westfield Station toward the right. You can also see the abandoned Black Iron Railroad Bridge that crosses the river that may be used as part of the Columbia Bikeway someday. Okay, before we take a look at the track that feeds the Pioneer Valley Railroad from the double track CSX mainline, we better let this eastbound freight go through. It's a crisp 20 degree day, February 26, 2014. I was waiting for the westbound Amtrak 449 to come through, but so far it's a no-show. It's been running an hour late this week. See what I do for you guys? I can't even feel the camera, it's so cold. The rail line that went from Westfield to Northampton was originally built roughly parallel to the Farmington Northampton Canal property. In the 1840s, railroads were advanced enough to replace many canals and were less susceptible to droughts and floods. You can still see some of the canal dredge in Westfield. The property where the downtown Westfield Stop and Shop is located was known as the Port of Westfield. Maybe the canal will be the topic of another video. You can see that the Westfield River is partially frozen over today with below zero temperatures expected tonight. Now we're finally going to take a look at the spur that branches off from the CSX main line. This is the feeder track from CSX to the Pioneer Valley Westfield Yard. They receive rail cars every day from CSX. You can see by the cleared snow at this switch that they used the jet engine heat melter after the last snowstorm. And just beyond the switch is the derailer to protect the CSX main line. That's the Westfield station in the background. It looks to me like this is a mechanized remote safety derailer probably tied into the switch control mechanism and operated by a dispatcher, I would assume, at the West Springfield Yard facility. Pioneer Valley Railroad was formed in 1982 and is part of the Pinsley Group. The Pinsley Group is more than railroads, however. They offer industrial development properties and coordinate with local towns and cities to create mutually acceptable and beneficial business plans. They are also closely aligned with railroad distribution services, which offers shipping solutions to industry. In the 1950s, lumber came into this rail yard in boxcars, and my summer job was unloading them, a great experience for a 15-year-old boy. The Pinsley website says, In each of Pinsley's three regions, we operate or serve numerous transload facilities. Included would be cross-dock services, rail-served warehouses, lumber transloads, bulk liquid transloads, plastic pellet transload, and uh, unit train transloads, as well as other rail logistics services. There are several other railroads that are operated by the Pensley Group. The Warren and Saline River Railroad, the Prescott and Northwestern Railroad, and the Arkansas Midland Railroad, 
comprise a 125-mile network. Their home is listed in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Pinsley also operates the Florida Northern Railroad on 104 miles of track, the Florida Midland Railroad on 28 miles of track, and the Florida Central Railroad with 68 miles of track. So Westfield is really lucky to be served by such a capable and comprehensive transportation service. When Pinsley acquired this railroad, this place was a mess, especially during the last of the New Haven Railroad days. From what I have observed, this railroad has worked very hard to operate an efficient, well-maintained railroad. My hat goes off to this firm. The railroad line to Holyoke began in 1871 with both freight and passenger traffic. It was composed of about 10 miles of main line and 10 miles of spurs and sidings. Here we are going to take the track to the right, go up through the Clay Hill Cut towards Holyoke. Here we leave the Westfield Yard, go up through the Clay Hill Cut and Curve, under the Lockhouse Road Bridge, and Route 202 Arch Bridge. After the Holyoke Line passes up through the Clay Hill Cut and Curve, it passes under the Lockhouse Road Bridge and then under Routes 10 and 202 near the Mass Pike Interchange. The street sign next to the bridge reads Arch Road. The arch was the shape of the original Route 202 bridge that crossed the rail line. It was originally wide enough for a couple of Model Ts. The state periodically kept widening the arch bridge for years until recently when it was completely demolished and replaced as you see here. The arch is gone forever. This next section shows the Holyoke Branch main line at the bottom of the map as it passes the Westfield Industrial Park and the large Savage Arms plant. This is the Westfield Industrial Park siding that serves several smaller industries. It splits and dead ends at the Mass Pike. Here's the Savage Arms Spur Track. The Savage Arms Company opened their Westfields plant in uh, 1959. In the last two years, Savage Arms has nearly doubled its production by adding more than 200 new jobs for a total of about 400 employees. This plant is served by one spur. Over on the left is the Savage Spur with the security fence gate. The middle track is the main line to Holyoke, and the right track is the passing track.
Next to the Savage Arms Spur is a passing or a runaround track. It stretches about a quarter of a mile or so to the Dry Bridge Road overpass. Here's the view looking back down the passing track toward Savage Arms. We're on the wooden dry bridge that is blocked off. Our next view is the main line heading toward Holyoke. This concludes our Holyoke Branch Westfield tour. The purple arrows map the rail line that once went to Southampton, East Hampton, and Northampton. It now dead ends at the Westfield Town Line. Back on the right is the old Holyoke Westfield Railroad Line. The left track heads toward Southampton. It is my understanding that this clearing that is in, f in front of us once contained a roundhouse and a turntable. It looks like someone unloads some dry bulk materials here at this small spur with the wheeled conveyor loader machine. Now we're going to travel from the Westfield Yard up a slight grade to the Mass Pike underpass. We are standing at the unprotected crossing at the Twist Street Landfill. This used to be called the City Dump. When I was a boy, all the city's trash was first burned, then bulldozed. When you dumped your trash, you had to be careful not to get too close to the flames, of course. Today, the landfill has been capped. There have been plans to use the methane gas and to, or to make this a solar farm. The trash is trucked out now at huge expense to the city. I wonder if the railroad could put a siding in here for trash train cars and move the trash by rail. This locomotive, 2597, was originally built for the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad in 1951. This type of loco is actually a rebuilt four-axle 1750 horsepower locomotive. And Pinsley apparently has several of these operating within their systems. from the Mass Pike underpass to the Clear Lumber Company spur tracks. Here we are on the other side of the Mass Pike underpass looking toward the Pioneer Valley Railroad Yard. A warehouse with its spur is on the left. I think this was Ashland D D Distributors Warehouse. I'm not sure. Off to the left is a spur that splits into two more tracks. The track on the left goes to the old Greif Brothers container factory that now houses Clear Lumber Company. You can see the stored gray plastic pellet cars on the right track. When I first inquired about the old Greif Brothers container building, I was told that it presently has several plastic extruder machines in it. They work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. At first, I couldn't figure out what a lumber company was doing with plastic extrusion machines. So what do these extruder machines extrude? They extrude PCV trim, molding, decking for housing and buildings. Extruded clear products are impervious to moisture, which means superior durability and low maintenance. They don't splinter, rot, delaminate, or swell. So I learned that Clear Lumber Company really produces what I call fake lumber, PCV lumber. And they are busy. I keep learning all the time. The man told me that Clear Lumber parent company 
has other operations in the area that use the plastic pellets too. The core plastic pellets are taken from the bulk rail cars and are transferred into storage towers. Hoses are connected to the hoppers on the rail car. Then the plastic pellets are sucked up into the tall storage towers which supply the production machines. And you can see the pipe uh, that run al runs alongside the building, the siding, uh, for the other cars. There's one car hooked up right now, as you can see. The next company heading north on the Pioneer Valley Main Line is a branch facility of Amerigas. Amerigas is a propane gas retailer and a middleman with over 2 million customers in the 50 states. Looking south on the main line behind Amerigas, we see that this propane facility used to have a spur track that went through the fence gates here. This property was built in the 1950s when a postal worker began selling bottles of LP gas to people in the countryside. It grew into what was known as Rural Gas Service with several plants in Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire. They then demonstrated to local and Connecticut tobacco farmers how they could dry their crops with the gas. So now Rural Gas Service had a summer market for the propane gas as well. Just up the road from Amerigas and the Lockhouse Road Crossing is Railroad Weed Control Incorporated. They have trucks that ride on the rails with pumps to spray the chemicals onto roadbed right-of-ways to control weeds and brush. One of the workers told me one time he always worried about getting hit by a train. This map shows the section of the Pioneer Valley Railroad main line as it heads north towards Southampton. Then it shows the railroad weed control spur, and finally the Lowe's Distribution Center flatbed division warehouse and yard. The first spur goes directly into the interior of the warehouse. The other spurs go to the yard and alongside the other warehouse. Of course, Lowe's needs little introduction about what they handle in the hardware and building construction industry. Next stop is the Southern States Cooperative Incorporated, Westfield Branch. The website says it primarily operates in the nursery, garden center, and farm supply store industry. I think they are the Agway store's middleman.
we are at the proverbial end of the line. About a mile north of the You Are Here map annotation, the track ends just below the Westfield Southampton town line. The dead end track stores several spare cars. The map shows a plant with three spur tracks. DCP Midstream is the largest natural gas processing company in the United States. This Summit Lock Road facility is a bulk propane gas distribution center that serves the New England area. Propane comes in by rail car and is pumped into tractor trailer tanker units that distribute the liquefied petroleum gas to customers throughout the region. like the three in-yard spur tracks at this facility can unload eight tank cars and store about five more inside their locked gate. Two tractor trailer units can be loaded at the same time. Work at this plant can begin at 2 a.m. loading the tractor trailers in the darkness. This is a seasonal business and some weeks more than 30 cars a week are pushed in and, in and out of this facility. The cars have to be spotted carefully so that the unloading hoses can be attached without difficulty. It makes for very skilled work for the Pioneer Valley Railroad crew. This is dangerous cargo and it is treated as such. I'm really surprised that the feds allow LP gas to be shipped without odorizer in it. Methyl mercapitan is the odorizer chemical that is added to LP gas to make it smell, thus providing some warning to humans that there may be a gas leak. When I worked for an LP gas outfit years ago, we were once called by the railroad and asked to come down to the rail yard and fix a leaking tank car. Without the mercapitan odorizer, how would a railroad worker know there was a leak at all? I need to research this more.
Just south of the propane plant is a passing track located on a long sweeping curve near the CNS Wholesale Grocers plant. This track allows the engine to move around the cars so that it can make the return trip at the head end of the train. Like many short lines, the crew must remain alert about the switching and car spotting sequence. As we mentioned in Westfield Railroads Part 1, much of this railroad was built parallel to the Farmington-Northampton Canal. Dredged canal areas are still available uh, to see in this part of Westfield. Lockhouse Road, Summit Lock Road run adjacent to this part of the PVCC right-of-way. In southern Westfield, Towpath Lane is another reminder of the canal's presence. We now view the train that has come from the propane plant. It has picked up two boxcars and a bulk car that had been spotted on the runaround track. This location is at the Ampad warehouse spur. This uh, warehouse spur splits one more time just before the warehouse. The train will continue all the way back to the Pioneer Valley Yard. Thanks for watching, my friend.